Today, welcome everybody. This is another little podcast from me, Hugh Waters over here in, in Gloucestershire and Phil over there in London. Can you see us all right, Phil? Yes. And uh, today we're going to be following on in the theme of quality control. Um, last time we talked about automated quality control, but there's still quite a lot of traditional visual and manual uh, QC going on. And Phil, perhaps you'll take us through some of that. Yes, indeed. Well, as, as you said, Hugh, the last one we did, uh, file-based QC, uh, so you can imagine um, uh, facilities where um, things are arriving as files, they're leaving as files. Why on earth would you want to do a traditional video QC along that chain? But, you know, we're not quite at the file-based nirvana yet. Um, there's still an awful lot of particular archive material kicking about on videotape. There's still an awful lot of people still delivering, particularly to Sky, on, on HDK MSR videotape. And... There's still a lot of thinking that you really need to put eyeballs on, on content. A lot of things are still not um, QCable by software. So so things like the, the BCAP caption sizes, you know, your, your house may be at risk if you do not keep up payments on it at the end of the commercial. That has to be checked by eyeball. The software can't do that yet. Um, profanity, badly, badly spelled lower thirds. Um, lots of things still have to have eyeballs on them. And if that's the case, well, you know, why, why aren't you also looking at the signal? So before we were so rudely interrupted by uh, by failing technology and such, I think I, <laughs> at some point I really am going to invest uh, have to invest in some decent cameras and maybe even a vision switcher to make this all work properly. But um, uh, I've got up on screen now uh, just a, a little USB camera that's pointing at my trusty uh, Tektronix WVR series uh, waveform monitor scope, and it really is uh, you know the, the Tektronix WVRs are yeah, I regard them as kind of being the last word in in, in waveform monitoring. If I stick up the um, the, the, the web page uh, from Tech showing the current models, the the the, the, the five thousand series the 6000 series are kind of current and if you want to really go uh, the whole hog the 8000 series is the um is the one to have because that it does 3g it does 3d as well it has, it has auto oh, really? automated 3d calibration as well um but this is a 7000 series so this is is you know a, a, a year or so old um and uh, it's uh, it's 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 just the thing for pretty much all um uh um uh, you know kind of um HDSDI uh, synchronous uh, video QC. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, Hugh, is I'm going to share our screen so that you can see exactly what I'm banging on about. So stand by yeah. a second. This might involve another edit point, dear viewer. <laughs> <laughs> dear viewer, I had to cut it again. Um, yes. So, Hugh, how's that, how's that yeah. for you? At the moment, I'm seeing nothing but spinning um, spinning discs, but uh, I'm sure something will come through in a minute. There we are. I can see it. Perfect. Jolly good. So, so uh, both uh, the people who are watching this recording and and and, and Hugh uh, in his comfy little uh, home office there can see the output of my my Tektronix waveform monitor. Um, exactly as you expect. I've got I've got full screen. Uh, I've got bars set up on there. And the Tektronix um, is you know, it's a kind of quad uh, quad display uh, machine. Uh, you know, by default you get you get four quadrants, but you can take any of them full screen. So if I if I do that, you can see I've taken the the component waveform there full screen. If I go back to my quad display, I can go and uh, you know bring up the uh, the Tektronix Arrowhead display. There, there, there we go, and you can see what okay. color bars look like on that. And uh, yeah, similarly with things like the video session data, that can all that can all be displayed full screen. And uh, you know that's very useful, particularly if you've you're in a facility where maybe this is being used in the audio department today. So perhaps perhaps rather than uh, the Arrowhead, we want to look at we want to, we want to assign an audio display to that quadrant. And there's a there's, uh, there's an audio display there. I might take that full screen. And that there is ideal for for for, for you know use in the audio department where perhaps you want to look at um, uh, uh, you know loudness measurements uh, and uh, that's something I think we're going to have to come to uh, loudness measurements is something that's becoming very uh, you know, important nowadays and so but you can see that on my Tektronix there is, is is measuring the two the two figures that we're, we're all worried about the, the, the short loud and the infinite loud um, with true peak and all the other things that you derive from that and, uh, and you can see there on the left hand side of the display it's showing uh, the four audio channels in fact eight audio channels that the that, that, uh, that embedded HDSDI uh, can carry this is a standard F signal. I'm playing these back from uh, 
if I switch back to my uh, my, uh, my my camera, I'm playing these back off um, uh, these groovy little um, solid state flash disks um, in a little flash disk player. So I've got no VTR or anything like that running. Um, uh, but this is some standard def test material, which is just to get us going. And I'll I'll, I'll flip over some oh, <laughs> multiple cameras. <laughs> Hopefully, there we go. We're, we're back to the uh, to the Logitech there, um, to the to, to, to the Tektronix. So if I take my Tektronix back to uh, the full screen, and uh, what have we got there? It looks like a, a, a trailer from a movie. Uh, looks like what is that? Miami Vice. Yeah, for sure. Jolly good. And and so each one of the quadrants, each one of the four way quadrants on a Tektronix, and it's pretty much their model. Nobody else really kind of does this. Um, uh, can be assigned with. Um, Th th about a dozen different test signals. So, 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 so we've got obviously we've got picture up there, we've got waveforms there, um, we've got video s session data down there. But that could be a gamut display. We've already seen the arrowhead. But if I if I bring up my options on there, then then obviously I can uh, the, the other favourite one of the, the one that uh, engineers and colorists like is the diamond display. Mm. And uh, we'll we'll talk a bit more about these um, presently. But um, just go back to uh, full screen so we know what's what. And uh, I think I've run out of test material now. No, here we go. Don't know what that is. Um, this, the, the, these little portable um, HDSTI playback devices are very good, and I use them for everything, for demoing Tektronix, for um, uh, uh, doing monitor calibration. So some of these slides will look uh, very familiar if you're, uh, if you're a monitor person. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, there's a grey patch field. Oh, there's some blue. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, the, the, engineer, yeah. the, engi the engineer's favourite. Um, and uh, we, we, we we could sort of refer people back to uh, our, uh, our our podcast on monitor calibration, and and this is exactly the, uh, the the system I use when I go out and have to throw a bunch of stuff in my rucksack to go and calibrate somebody's monitor. So um, that's that's the equipment we're playing with today, and uh, and and so. You know, in a traditional uh, QC environment, uh, that's that's typically what you'd expect the engineer to be looking at. Uh, yep. you, you know, a Tektronix waveform monitor, and it might be a very modern, uh, you know, WVR or WFM series quad display rasterizer type machine like this, or it might be an older, you know, 601 style, you know, even even a, a cathode ray tube uh, type yep. type waveform monitor, which was very 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 popular, you know, from the dawn of television, really. Well, there's still plenty of them around, you know. An awful lot of people have got them. And an awful, it has to be remembered that an awful lot of the people that might watch uh, these podcasts are, you know, still using a lot of that equipment, so... For sure. Yeah. I was... Um, I think I've made reference to it before. I was working in Nigeria uh, last year. And, uh, you know, they're keeping... They're keeping 24-7 stations on air using very elderly equipment. And uh, uh, part of the system we built for them was some uh, WFM series uh, waveform monitoring. And as we left, I saw the guy from the, the transmission department looking very kind of jealously at the, <laughs> these, these ingest desks that we've been putting in. And I kind of thought to myself, hmm, I, wonder if, uh, I wonder if he'll be paying a visit to, uh, to reallocate some of that test equipment maybe. Um, but the, the nice thing about, about the Tektronix, uh, so if I, if I cut back up to the... Um, to the, uh, the the Tektronix display is that it's a very nice kind of halfway house between uh, traditional uh, video QC and file based QC because as well as 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 looking and driving and feeling very much like a, a traditional television test set it's also a, a web server and uh, they've they, they they've all done this for forever and so I've got up on the screen now the uh, the remote interface for this exact one in fact and if I if I get a snapshot of the display. Um, uh, we will hopefully see um, just to prove this is the this is the machine we're looking at on the live view. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's a very clean machine, it's, it's glistening white, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's just try that again with a with a PNG. Perhaps perhaps my copy of Safari here doesn't like uh, Windows.bmp files. There we go. Look at that. Oh, yes, so, so, so so I mean, you think well, what 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 good is that? Why why do I want to just download the, the front panel display? But you can do an awful lot with these. They have it. They, they they'll serve up a Java uh, applet, so you can drive it remotely. You can see the display remotely over the network. Um, but the real power in these is the fact that you can download the event log. Um, and you can see exactly what the waveform monitor has been doing. Um, and uh, depending on how you set it up uh, in, in its QC features, it's looking for everything. It's it's looking for uh, audio uh, um, uh, problems, you know, mute, session loud, clipping, all that kind of stuff. It's looking for um, uh, you know uh, SDI gamma errors, basically anything that you might want. In, in a QC, it's looking for and it's writing into the log. Now, you know, uh, 
at the starting point, it's very aggressive um, and it writes everything in. Uh, but but part of the skill of using these 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 Tektronix waveform monitors is to be able to go through and set a template to say what you're worried about. If you're doing just a picture pass, just a picture QC, then you turn off all the audio things, you turn off all the physical layer measurements, and you just leave it to test audio things for uh, to test uh, video things for you. You know, and, but you can imagine there are other situations where you just assume the program material going through it is correct, but you'd like it to watch for extended periods of audio silence or you know extended periods of black or extended frozen frame periods maybe maybe you've got it installed at a, at a at a cable head end and you want it to be watching your channel for you and telling you when something hideous has gone wrong like the the synchronizer's crashed and it's just you're just putting out the same still frame for for minutes at a time and and it can do all of that as well and and it can wow. do it can for all of these things so if i if i if i go back to my uh, my main display there and i go into my config menu uh, all the all all the things it can do. So let's bring up a uh, some the alarms menu. Here we go, and let's go into maybe video content. You see our menu here. Um, uh, we can we can uh, check for various things in the video content menu: RGB gamut, composite gamut, luma levels. Uh, 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 you know, extended periods of black, fl frozen frames. And what, what what we then do with those events? Do we just we, do we just light up the little red thing on the screen? Do we write an entry into the into the log for, for later export into into the web browser? Do we do we do we beep the the buzzer on the front of the machine? Do we, we do we send out an SNMP trap so that it can email the engineer or text oh, cool. the, the operator and say, look, the channel's blinking, got frozen output. Or do we do we do we close the GPI on the back to to honk a big flashing red light outside the, outside the transmission booth to say you know we've fallen off the air chaps so there's you know all these things are very configurable and um, you know makes a very powerful uh, very powerful automated test set but still having all those qualities of a of a of a traditional sort of video QC machine so yeah you know, we sell a lot of these and and. Uh, uh, you know, I quite often go to facilities where a year later they've been using it for a year, and I say, "Oh, you got it on the network? You're using all the automated QC features?" No, no, we can get into all of that. You know, blah blah blah. And I think, well, it's such a shame because most of the power of it is is in there. You, you know. Yeah. So I, I do love the idea of a GPI closure, so that a transmission op in the middle of the night, nodding off, suddenly gets a little poke when something with a stick on a <laughs> solenoid. <laughs> 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 Yeah, wake up your swine, something's gone wrong. Um, so um, th th I wanted also to talk about some of the things that, that, that a traditional video QC operator would be expected to pay attention to, mm. but which you can't um, uh, assume your test set can, can, can deal with. Uh, and, and, and so uh, let's go back up to the, the BCAP uh, caption specification. So so here we go. This, this tells us for... Uh, non-widescreen and for widescreen telly in both standard definition and high definition uh, forms how you know what are what the what the what the limits are for the size of captions and if you talk to anybody who works at places like mpc or places that do lots of commercials they're very hot on all this i'm, I'm told that uh, quite often producers and directors will be riding them uh, to, 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 to make uh, ca to make captions even smaller, even smaller. But uh, th there's a legal requirement, um, and it's called the BCAP spec. Um, but, that, but that legal requirement doesn't specify the number of lines, does it? It does. It specifies the number of television lines. Now, it might not be clear to you, Hugh, because you're watching back over the remote desktop, I'll, but I'll zoom in on this. Um, oh, yes, yes, it says, yes. Um, um, and uh, I zoomed in a bit too far. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for, for the SD... Uh, uh, four by three, 14 television lines, uh, and, and, and 16 television lines for, for widescreen, but SD, and 30 television lines for um, HD and uh, uh, you know six widescreen because there is no non-widescreen HD. Yeah. So if I um, if I go back to the uh, t to the camera and I go back to the Tektronix, uh, then. Uh, if I go back to some real pictures, not just a test signal, and not just some colour bars. So look at this. Is, this is that an awful show that uh, was on Channel 4. I think it was about a nightclub or something, you know, like a reality show set in a nightclub. Awful, awful, awful blinking nonsense. <laughs> but but for, for points of illustration, I'll take that full screen, and then I'll call up the options available to me 
on the on 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 the picture frame, and uh, and, and and we've got lots of um, uh, you know sort of safe areas and and safe captions for safe area for caption, safe area for for action, so we can make sure our graphics are in the right place. We've even got several custom. Um, uh, uh, boxes that we can define in the config menu to say all our lower thirds have to sit here, for example. So, so you can you can turn a bunch of these things on, and uh, and oh, and, uh, yeah. and and you know your Tektronix is then is then uh, you know marking the display for you so that uh, you know you, you know that. Um, yeah. Oh, you can have more than one at a time. So you can uh, be... yeah, many at a time. Uh, oh right. Uh, now this one's interesting. Black stroke frozen gratiol that says. What proportion of the screen do you want me to look at for detecting uh, lots of black? And what proportion of the screen do you want me to look at for, 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 for detecting frozen frames? Right. Kind of handy, isn't it? Um, yeah. You know, and there's, there's lots of other things here, center graticule and stuff like that. But the thing that's really very, very useful on, on, on the tech in, in this mode is, is the line selector. So I pop on the line selector, which yeah, waveform monitors have had forever. And uh, mm. I wind... Okay. You can see down uh, bottom center there, it's giving us a measurement of the TV, oh, yeah. TV line that we're sitting on. So if you were worried about a caption size, you can just scroll right through and go from the top to the bottom of the caption and just confirm that it's within the specifications. 30 lines for, for, for high definition or 16 lines for standard definition. And, yeah. uh, you know, again, it's, it's the kind of thing that, 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 that you've got to use a test set for. You can't put a ruler against the television. Well, you probably could, actually, but, but that really would be... Plumbing hard work. Pretty, not terribly satisfactory. Yeah, pretty imprecise. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's that's caption sizes, which again requires eyeballs. Um, and in fact, I, I I turned cages on and off there. And so we should probably just pop up a, a slide showing uh, sort yeah. of definitions for cages. I mean, typ typically the, uh, the the rule of thumb is that for, for for safe action, which is that part of the screen where meaningful action can't go outside of, that's about ten percent in from the edges of the screen. And then for for captions and graphics, i.e., that that part of the screen where you're not meant to put meaningful captions and graphics outside of that's another 10 percent in from that so so that's uh, that's the specification and I've, uh, the slide we've got up at the moment's got got the, the all the line numbers and and oh, all, yeah. all that kind of thing um, who, who generated that i mean is this is this a beep spec is this a, an IT, itu spec uh i think it's an ebu spec this EBU spec. this slide you see here is nicked from the the dpp documents uh yeah but they all have it you go to the bbc's delivery spec it's in there it's and and, uh, and, and actually actually no, I think I nicked this from, from Mr. Murray Pro's website because for a long time, Tony Drummond Murray used to make a good living out of, uh, out of uh, cages, you, you know, the machines that insert yes. the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the areas to show what's what. So, so there we are. That's BCAP for caption sizes. That's um, uh, cages so that you can get um, uh, uh, you know, graphics and action safe correct. Uh, the next thing that, that uh, is worth talking about is the whole business of legalizers. Yeah, I mean, a lot of places will say, actually, why on earth do we need, um, uh, why on earth do we need, uh, you know, these expensive Tektronics machines if we've got a legalizer? And it's a very fair point. So, what I've got up on screen at the moment is a is a screen capture from uh, my my trusty Tektronics, and this yeah. is this is an artificial uh, waveform. This is um, a, 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 a luminance ramp running from sub black to super white. But you can see what, what, what are the little transitions? Well, yeah, I was going to say you can you can see it down there below below black, so in the super black region, and above white in the super white region. There's a little wriggle. There's a little a little bit of detail. You know, maybe hmm. maybe that's a camera that's been misaligned, and that's some perhaps some detail down in the dark areas of the picture, or some details up in the clouds, or something like that. And um, so by way of illustration, here's a here's the output from from a legalizer that's been hard set to produce legal video, but but just just crop the thing within an inch of its life. Just chop off those levels because we don't we don't want any of that nonsense. And of course now we've got a picture that, although it's entirely legal, has got none of that detail in the blacks and the whites. Yeah. So this is this is a, an eye height legalizer, an FP series eye height legalizer set um, with what they call the Japanese knee characteristic, <laughs> which is a rather splendid okay. expression. <laughs> and what it does is. Um, for those areas of the picture where it's detecting illegality, it provides a very gentle kind of uplift in the blacks. And similarly in the whites, it, it rolls the, the super whites off down a bit, but, but it only applies that, that, that gain in the blacks and that attenuation in the whites over, over the parts of the picture where they're needed. So it's a bit like an audio yeah. compressor. It's t kind of taming the picture. 
And you think to yourself, well, hang on, that's producing a, a picture with a slightly different dynamic range to it. Well, it is, but at least you're still seeing the detail in the whites, you know, the detail in the clouds or somebody's face or in the hair or something, yeah. and the details in the dark areas of the picture down there, um, without uh, the, the worry that just details have been sliced out of the business, uh, out of the out of the whole picture. So. Uh, again, that's just a little, a little kind of, you know, uh, aside for how, how legalizers work and how they can be abused. Um, the 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 the, uh, the practice of just slicing off top and bottom is very much how if you put a color effect on an avid timeline, you know, you mark in to out yeah. on a finished program and apply a color effect to get the levels right. That's often what what you kind of get. And uh, and so, uh, ironically, you think a hardware legalizer not having access to all the program material at one time, only access, having access to a single frame of video at one time, would do a worse job. But it really is the case that, that hardware legalizers seem to do a better job than, really? than the kind of algorithms you find in Media Composer and things like that. I suppose if you've only got limited things to work with, you've got more time to, to work on the algorithm, really. So uh, maybe that's what it is. So that's, that, that's legalizers and how they fit into the whole chain. Now, the, the last little thing I thought was worth mentioning, and we, we have talked about this uh, in the yeah. past, is, is um, photosensitive epilepsy. And I was thinking about that when you mentioned the nightclub, because I thought, ah, oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The, Flashing the, lights, where else would you find them? The paparazzi, um, uh, y you know, that, that's, that's all where it occurs. And so here is a, capture, a, a, a paragraph from the Ofcom spec. And... Uh, you know, we've seen that we, we talked about this already in the in the uh, uh, file-based QC uh, spec, but uh, that, that's basically what 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 flashes are all about. You know, yeah. um, uh, it defines a flash as being a, a, a difference of more than twenty candelas per meter squared of luminance um, uh, on a single frame where the frames either side have got that much differentiation. And uh, you know how many of those are allowed within how many frames, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's the kind of thing that you can read in the DPP spec. But it's again, it's the kind of thing that a Tektronix, for example, won't pick up on. It is the sort of thing you would need either software or a Harding. And we'll, you know, we've yeah. we've we've banged on about the iniquities of Mr. Harding and such like. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so back to our back to our our, our Tektronix, and I'm going to make that yeah. a tiny bit bigger, uh, so you can see that a bit better. Um, we've got that uh, showing the uh, that those uh, those jolly old party people um, getting ready for a night on the tiles, no doubt. Um, yes, I expect they're the beautiful people we heard about so much when I was young. <laughs> but, but I was never one of them. <laughs> well, no, no, me too. I mean, we, we ended up in engineering, didn't we? So uh, how, how could we be? But for illustration purposes, I, I've just gone back to colour bars. And uh, uh, there's uh, there, there's our, our way forward. We'll talk a little bit more in detail about, about the, uh, the, 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 the um, waveform display. Now, yeah, here's here's um, here's here's a a, a, a a component parade, as it's called. You can see we're we're looking at a single line of video. That's the uh, that's the luminance portion, and they're the two color difference channels. The uh, the, the blue color difference, sometimes referred to engineers as the as the U, which I will do, but it's I acknowledge that it's not entirely accurate. U, not right, yeah, yeah and, and 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 the and the red color difference signal, um, the, the, again referred to as the V channel, and and. Uh, Rather splendidly, um, the Tektronix, um, well, like all waveform monitors, it um, it puts the 350 millivolt gain onto the onto the two color difference channels, uh, so that you know, looking at it in a single look, you can see there's zero volts, and there's 0 0.7 of a volt up there for, for, yep. for peak white, and and because it's the two color difference channels, the U and the V, because of the way they're calculated, um, th th they're they're Bipolar signals, they can get, they can go negative and they can go positive, and so if they were sat down on the zero volt level, as I suppose technically they should be, you'd then be constantly looking around the screen and thinking, oh, uh, am I, am I, where am I looking, kind of thing. But by putting that yeah. 350 millivolt lift onto the two signals, everything is contained within the zero volt for, for lowest and the, the 0.7 of a volt for highest. Now. I'm saying zero volts, 0.7 of a volt, or yeah, as the Tektronics here is marked, zero and 700 millivolts. Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. Um, but of course, we're looking at digital signals. We're looking at digital signals coming out of a little di digital signal generator, going down a digital cable into a digital waveform monitor. At no point has this signal ever been turned back into volts. You know, it's entirely, yes. it's entirely erroneous to talk about it in terms of volts. <laughs> They're just numbers representing pixels. But but it is the case that we've all kind of grown up with with. Um, Can you change the um, the vertical uh, scale to, to represent uh, bits or, or, or uh, something else? Not on this display, you can't. No, there are there are other displays. Um, uh, so uh, if I bring up the uh, the measurement display and 
uh, we can. It'll let us look at real pixels. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so if I go down there. So we really can. Come on, Mr. Tektronix. So we really can look at pixels and how they relate to uh, the, 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 the data for the luminance and the two color difference signals. Um, and at that point, you'll see, well, it's not very clear, but you'll see on the left-hand scale, we've now resorted to numeric values rather than millivolts. Yeah. But, uh, but when we're dealing with um, uh, you know, real television waveforms, Mr. Tektronix says, well, you know, you're dealing with real television waveforms, and we call those millivolts. In fact, if you look on the other side of the display, um, on the right-hand side, we've got percentages. But um, but when you're looking at waveforms, it assumes you want to see millivolts, which uh, okay. is a bit, bit, of, bit of quaintness there. Now, I did say that um, we're looking at um, a single line of video. Actually, let's go back to our full screen. Uh, and... Uh, we, we know full well that, that, that with, with all television test sets, you don't ordinarily just look at a line of video. You look at many, many lines of video overlaid on top of themselves. Uh, and, and that's, of course, a, a much more convenient thing because who wants to have to turn on the line selector and, <laughs> and, and, and scroll up and down through the, uh, you, you know, through the image to check every line of video? Of course you don't. You want to see the whole lot revealed you know, in one go. Now... Well, when we, you know, me and you growing up, Hugh, we were very used to analog test sets where if you turned the line selector on, the display got very dim because yes, we, we right. were dealing with a real CRT and a real, you know, electron beam having to, you know, run across the display. And all of a sudden, rather than it just illuminating the phosphors, you know, at a rate, at line rate, at, 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 at 16 uh, kilo, you know, 16 thousand times per second all of a sudden yeah. it's having to strobe out a single line of video and, and the display got a lot dimmer but of course with our yeah. digital test set we don't we don't see that but a good way of revealing that is if i go back to if i go back to some real pictures there we go uh now we've we can see our, our top top right quadrant there we're looking at the uh, the component waveform yeah if i turn on the line selector you'll see that all, all of a sudden it looks it's very crisp very different, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And if I and if I wind uh, my uh, my, my uh, uh, line marker through the image, you can see exactly what's going on, and uh, mm. it's rather good. If I if I, if I go, and get, go and just rest between on that uh, window uh, lattice work there, and, and then we wind it down into the bright stuff that's behind, you you can you can relate entirely uh, the waveforms to uh, what's what what it's strobing out from the picture. Yeah, and so that's that, that's that's kind of one of those things that. You kind of think it should be very useful, but actually, whoever uses the line selector, probably only the guy in the workshop who's who's trying to figure out why the vert vertical interval time codes are the wrong lines or something like that. You know, for the I suppose so. I mean, we used to use it for all sorts of things, you know, dropouts and and when yes. when somebody's complaining about something, um, you know, whose fault was this? You are sometimes arguing about what goes on at a single line and say, well, ah, look at this. So it'd be very useful to at times. Not as often as all that, thank God, but uh, once in a while. So, Save the bacon. <laughs> so, of course, the other thing that the, the, the QC operator can look at is he, he might be looking at uh, a single line of video, which, you know, when we say a single line of video, invariably we mean every line of video. Or, or maybe he's looking at um, uh, a, whole fra a whole field of video. So, so if, I, if I press, the, if I press the, um, the sweep button there, and you'll notice that, uh, uh, you know, that down bottom, bottom right, we've gone from 15 microseconds per division, we've gone to 6 milliseconds per division. Uh, and 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 so now we're seeing the uh, the um, a complete field of video, uh, and and that's occasionally useful, particularly if there's a fault with the picture because some things yeah. only show themselves on a, on a field rate display. Um, but uh, the other, because the, the other nice thing we 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 have inside the tech is uh, as well as the the Y uh, PBPR uh, parade, which is really showing us what the pixels are because the pixels are Y um, Y U V. Um, we've also got a bunch of other stuff, and and for example. The RGB uh, parade is very useful for for colorists and the like, yes, and, and camera engineers. Uh, and in fact, the Tektronics now is doing this is doing this little trick. It's actually transcoding the data for us because the data as coming down the coaxial cable is, of course, why CBCR pixels. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not RGB. Well, it could be nowadays. You know, SDI can carry RGB, and if it's a recording coming off an HD Cam SR deck, it might be RGB. But I would say 99% of the time it isn't. Uh, so, but, but the RGB uh, parade is very useful. And, and, and the other thing, which, you know, I don't know if it's useful or not, but it's very kind of cute, is, is, the, um, is the sort of synthesized version of a PAL signal. 
So look at that. Wow. The, the Tektronix will will inside it will code for us uh, the image and make it look like a PAL signal, which is is kind of wacky. So we go back to color bars and sort of pretend burst. Yep, pretend burst and pretend subcarrier sitting on top of the. Pretend subcarrier. Although, but you've um, you've you've never you've, you've never seen a composite signal that clean, have you? No. <laughs> Under what circumstances would that be useful, other than a party piece? Uh, I, I really don't know. I, 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 <laughs> I don't know that I've ever ever used an SGI signal synthesized into a into a, uh, a composite signal. But because uh, yeah. if you're wanting to measure the composite signal, if you were going to do it, and of course it ought to be perfect. Yeah. The, the, the most you could find out is, there was, is that there was something lacking in the <laughs> in the synthesis. In which case, oh well. Yeah, it, it, oh, well. it's a, cur a curious thing. So uh, it's there because it can be. So let's go back up to, uh, no, no doubt somebody will be saying, no, you fool, it's incredibly useful, and I use it all the time. Um, so that's that's waveforms on the Tektronix. I mean, you know, reasonably simple, and, and exactly all the features you'd find on older machines. Um, mm. But uh, again, very useful. Now, this, the, 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 um, the, the next thing we'll think about is the gamut displays. So I'll take that full oh, yeah. screen. Now this is this is the, the, the there there are the, there are these two gamut displays that Tektronix they're proprietary to Tektronix. So you don't find them on any anybody else's machines. The the Arrowhead and uh, and and the Diamond. And in fact, they also do a they do a split Diamond as well. So let's go back to the Arrowhead because it's rather splendid. So so the Arrowhead is 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 a very interesting one. But it's, it's essentially if. If trying to do a QC looking at uh, the waveforms of the color components was hard, um, they thought to themselves, why not just just transcode it into a single image so that you've got luminance going up the, the vertical scale here, and then going down the two heads of the arrow, we've got our two color difference channels. Okay. So it's kind of all there, uh, almost like a, a sort of a bowl of porridge. Everything's in there, yeah? And and those right, okay. and those so those those blue markers represent the, the the limit of 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 the gamut. In this case, it's a six hundred one signal. So down there, you can see six hundred one fifty. That's just it's some standard definition test material. Uh, yeah. And and so that's what color bars looks like, and that gives you a very good idea as to as to what how a color uh, how the how the arrowhead display should contain uh, the image in question. So if I if I go and find some proper pictures, in fact, I'm going to have to go back to. Uh, Go back to a full screen. Oh, we're looking at monochrome stuff now, which of course is is hopeless. But if I go back to those the party people, those lovely people in the uh, in the nightclub, and we take our uh, and we take this full screen again, so you can you can see what it looks like. You can see that it's contained within. If, if I stop that, this looks like it's very well racked or graded material because nothing's even getting mm. close to being illegal. Uh, but but uh, that's that's what it looks like. In fact, it even looks as if the, the luminance is quite a restricted range as well. It looks as if it's only going up to about ninety percent of full luminance. It's the sort of thing you might expect in a night club. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if it was out of gamut, I would expect to see things extending beyond the, the blue dashed line. Well, let's let's uh, actually. I've, so so what I'm going to do is I'm, I've I've got some hideous, some truly some truly terrible material um, on this other disc, on this other um, uh, what do we call these things? Um, uh, flash disks. So if I if I just um, so I'm going to swap that over, move my light. So what, what what are these little flash disks? Well, this is this is just like a laptop hard drive, but it's a oh, uh, it's a solid it's SSD thing. Solid state SSD exactly. And my little tech, my little uh, Blackmagic um, playback device is meant to bolt onto the back of a camera, and ah. uh, and you'd use it for um, you know solid state capture. So if I turn off uh, my Blackmagic and uh, Take that Are these like that sort of hyperdeck shuttle things? So. Exactly, yeah. Hy the, the, the hyperdeck shuttle is a is that, is that the AJA product? I can't remember. I think it might be. Yeah, I've, I haven't actually ever met one in real life, but I've heard about them. Yeah, no, we sell, sell a lot of them. Um, and in fact, I nicked one from stock about a year ago for all this kind of nonsense. And uh, so here we go. Here we go. Let me put my uh, camera back to. Um, Nope, not that camera. Back to um, <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. This is this is one of my colleagues, Dave Skeggs, uh, uh, rides for one of the Lotus teams or races in one of the Lotus um, uh, formulas. Um, is that what you call it? Oh wow! Yeah, I think so. Yes. Yeah, and so uh, and so he produces a lot of their stuff. So now, if I if I if I uh, let's, let's pause on a, a good good frame because this some of this material is truly atrocious.
I can hear the birds tweeting behind you here. That's rather pastoral yes, and splendid. It is beautiful. Yeah. The sun seems to have gone in, but um, only slightly. It's blue skies out there. So, As you can see, it's beautiful. So here we go. Um, uh, I've, I've paused on a frame, and you, we can see you. So, so down uh, bottom bottom left oh, of yeah. the screen, where we're 1080 i 50 now. So this is this is high definition material. So the, the the Tektronics will of course be switched over now to the 709 color space, and go back to colorimetry if if you want to know the difference between 601 and 709. Uh, but you can see the limit of our luminance. We're we're, we're graunching on that for sure. This material isn't isn't you know constrained level wise in the luminance department and we're start you know in the in down the the v color difference channel we're starting to see some trouble as well so if in fact if we go to our if we go to our our um, parade hopefully we'll we'll see that there as well and yes indeed look at that so we can see yes. quite a lot of stuff going over on, on in the luminance side of the house and our v channel we can see some stuff start just starting to tickle above 100% in in the in, yeah. the, in the v side of this but of course watching that on a on a parade um, you might not notice that immediately. You might your 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 your, your attention might have been distracted by the fact that the luminance is terrible, and you might not have noticed the stuff yeah. in the in the um, in the color difference channels was problematic, um, and uh, well, you might have been distracted by the uh, the gorgeous young women who seem to run the world of racing. <laughs> who knew? I thought it was hairy blokes, but perhaps not. Um, but the, the, so the, the so the brilliant thing about the about the arrowhead display is, is that it it, um, it gives you this ability to um, see everything at once, as it were. You can you can you can see the oh, the luminance. Yes, yeah, at a glance. glance you see the luminance and the two color difference channels all in a single display. And if if your green trace is is, is wandering outside of, of of the the markers, you know you're in trouble. So it's actually, very handy for live as well. You'd be able to keep a, a very close eye on stuff just. With one eye. Absolutely, and, and it's the kind of thing that um, probably isn't used enough. It's been around forever. Textronics have had the Arrowhead for error, ever. It's proprietary to them, um, but uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm sure if I was QCing, particularly like you say live television, I'd, I'm sure I'd live in that display. Um, but if I if I pull up the the other display that's available in the gamut settings, the Diamond display. The diamond display is used a bit more uh, in the world of, uh, uh, sort of grading and and, and mm. camera calibration. So, what they do with the diamond display is is that they transcode again a bit like the the RGB parade. They transcode the YCBCR data into RGB for us, and then they plot it in two diamonds. And so the top diamond is plotted green along that axis against blue along that axis, and then on the bottom diamond, green along that axis and red along that axis. So you've got sort of the two colour difference right, um, yeah. systems represented in two diamonds with the very dark areas of the picture at the centre of the diamond and the very white areas of the picture, you know, you know the, 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 the green-blue areas of the picture up there and the red-green areas of the picture down there. And again, it's the same deal. You've got, you've got these diamonds that show us the limits of the colour gamut. And for, if you imagine you're a camera engineer and you're, uh, and you're calibrating a camera, um, you know, the first thing you do is you cap the camera up and you, you look at if there's any colour cast in the blacks. So that's, you're looking in the centre area. And then, of course, you point the camera at a, at a chip chart and you're looking for colour casts in the greys and the whites. And so ideally, you want to see a straight line running through the centre of the diamond. And, and as you calibrate your camera, you see that... Uh, the, the center line through the middle of the diamond tilt either way, you know. And once you've got the the, yep. the, the balance of red, green, and blue correct, it, it becomes very obvious. And so, if you're a, if you're a, a camera racks engineer, it's immediately um, a, a very useful uh, display to have. And again, with um, with um, uh, when we're trying to say graders, that, that they they like that idea of being able to see the the color differences expressed thus. And um, so we've yeah. got. We've gone on to uh, well, th these are sympathy bars now. They're not just straight colour bars like you might have found on VT, but these are these are sympathy bars. And again, so that's, that's a very useful test signal because uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there which uh, you know is helpful. We just pop that open mm. and just remind people of the fact you can't see it on this um, horrible little USB webcam. But but down there you've got a little pluge signal, and uh, yep. and obviously you've got colour bars which are useful in lots of ways because they they show the full extent of of uh, of transitions etc and uh, we've also got the uh, anti-color display here so we can we can we can put the monitor into uh, blue only mode and it becomes a lot easier to do our our, our saturation lineup um, so simty bars are very useful you get them with avid and you get them on final cut pro and everywhere else and uh, you know i'm surprised more people don't you ask but people do use them for sure um remind me of what uh, the um 
the blue box next to the white box is. I've forgotten what it is. There's, there's um, and I have oh. as well, actually, <laughs> to my shame, because <laughs> it's significant, and I can't remember what it was. Yes, no, I, I, I'll, I'd, I'd have to look that up. I don't remember, to be honest. Um, oh, well. uh, but uh, yeah, no, you've uh, you, you see those, uh, you see it a lot more on the on the head of American programs, don't you? Uh, those, that's exactly, that style that's, of sympathy bars. Not not so. It was, it was something about. It was was it I the I signal. It was something to do with subcarrier, I think, but I can't remember what. Maybe wrong. Long, long ago. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop back my material to uh, that that motor racing footage. There we go. Let's just stop that a second. And uh, we're not going to talk about the audio because I think we need to save audio for its own podcast, particularly with loudness and and such. Um, so, so we'll keep this as a video QC thing. Yeah. Uh, but if I um if I if I stick into that quadrant a uh, the video status information. So, display type, video session. And this is showing us a bunch of stuff about the SDI signal, uh, which, you know, may or may not be useful. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, it's kind of all the metadata, I suppose, associated with, with you know, what's what's in the um, uh, the video system, video signal, uh, you know, sort of what it declares itself to be, 1080, I-50, you know, the sampling structure and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the, 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 the really useful, I mean, the, the most useful um, subpage within this tile is um, the error log. So let's go back up to the error log. Yeah. And kill the menu, and so we can see um, that's the same error log that we were we were looking at when I when I popped up um, the, um, the the one that I downloaded from the machine. So if I go back to the front page and and I repull the error log, the error log now will have will have been uh, you know running a lot a lot longer. And in fact, it looks like the clock is misset on this on this Tektronix. And whereas before, when we were just playing around with that standard definition finished material, um, we were we were seeing like audio silence errors, and we were seeing um, you know format mismatch errors, things like that. As I've been putting through all this um, uh, you know badly finished uh, racing footage, you can see oh, there's so many yeah. RGB gamma errors and audio session, you know audio louds and all that kind of stuff, composite gamma errors, and uh, you know luminance overs and all that kind of stuff, and uh, they've been building up as we've just been chatting. So, very handy indeed. So when you're rejecting something, or you're having a little, um, a little word with people who've made stuff, very handy to have the uh, log. And you say, well, this is what the problem is. It's very straightforward. So, I've st or if you've been accused of something and there isn't a problem, indeed, yeah. To have a piece of paper to say, no, there isn't. So we can see the error log building now, and I've, I've started playing the material back again. If I go full screen, we'll see. Uh, We'll see, we'll see the material going, and the Tektronix is 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 making the log as it goes along, um, so you, you can almost see, almost on every shot change, there's there's more problems. And that's because this material yeah. is is just riddled. I think actually this material was finished. Uh, this is the copy that was then uploaded to Vimeo. I then downloaded it, and that's what we're watching. So it's been through <laughs> it's been through some sort of web encoding wrangling, and that's why it's in such a terrible state. And we're glad for that, otherwise we'd have nothing to talk about. No, so, so, so looking at the Tektronix display as it builds, and let's just let it go a little bit further and then I'll stop it. Um, uh, uh, the, the green... Oh, the, come on, stop. So the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, the green um, uh, uh, conditions mean that it's, you've come out of an error condition. The red ones mean you've gone into an error condition. Let's play it again. Oh, I see. Uh, and 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 the stuff in brackets afterwards tells you essentially what was wrong. So for audio silence, it's telling us that channels three through eight had an extended period of silence. For the RGB gamma error, it's telling us that the gamma error is in the red channel, and because it's the uppercase R, it's in it's in the bright parts of the picture in the whites. For these gamma errors, we're seeing here, uh, it's telling us that that it's it, it's it's wrong. In, in the whites in the red channel the both the green in the blacks and the whites is wrong as we, as is the blue and we're going into that error that that error is occurring and when that error finishes it'll come out as a, as a green condition so yeah you know it's a remarkably powerful tool because there's no way that a, that, a, that an operator can sit and watch that and and, and derive all that for himself you, you know um i know for, for facilities where, where, where i go and, and work 
where they do lots of um, commercials, uh, a 30 second commercial might get watched through several dozen times um, yeah. because literally every frame has to be right. And and so imagine trying to QC you know, a 45 minute finished program. Uh, it's impossible. It's almost impossible. Whereas the Tektronics will kind of watch it for you and kind of do all that correctly for you. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll never miss a frame kind of thing. Fantastic. What a tool. Yeah, absolutely. And as I say, we, we, we sell these an awful lot. Um, and I don't think people use them to anything like of their abilities. I mean, we've just kind of touched on, on, on some of the things you can get this thing to do for you today. But uh, And I think well, we will return to it and, to, and talk about audio loudness monitoring because that is becoming very important with, with, with R128, EBU R128 and um, an ITU 1770, which is the American spec for, for rolling loudness measurements. But... Um, I think uh, I think that's probably given people a, a little bit to think about in terms of well, video waveforms and, and traditional video QC. Brilliant, because yes, yeah, so automated QC, lovely though it is, whilst you're on your coffee break, you do need to actually be sure. And as you say, these programs, until they're only only ever enjoyed by computers, will be enjoyed by people with eyeballs, and people with eyeballs need to test them now and again. So that's really fantastic. Thank you for that, Phil. No worries. Most interesting there. And just before we we wind down. I just wanted to say a special thank you to a viewer. We had a we had a contact this week from Azim Butt, who um, is in Berkshire, and he's sent us a whole list of things that he'd like us to talk about. Um, some of which we've touched on, and others which I'm sure will 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 appear from time to time. But anybody else that thinks we ought to be talking about something, please contact us. And as ever, if anybody feels like um, joining in one of these, we're always uh, welcome to uh, visitors and chats. Uh, but anyway, there you go. It's lovely to hear from people, even if you just want to say hello. Really, actually, it's very nice just to just to hear from the viewers. So to know that there are some, which is which is really cool. Indeed, and so Phil, thank you very much indeed. No worries. I'm just going to remind people where they can get hold of the podcast. Um, it's on yeah, iTunes. It is. iTunes is by far the biggest um, uh, place where, where where people get hold of it from. Um, uh, I, I tend to talk about it a lot on my blog. Um, uh, Whenever we've done a new episode, it's up it goes. So there's a file based QC for TV delivery from from a couple of weeks ago, and and then some of the other collaboration ones we did with Lawrence at Deluxe oh, yeah. Digital Cinema and uh, and such. And uh, I'm just I've been, I've been trying to get a little kind of uh, uh, wiki on the go, um, uh, but uh, not really not really kind of succeeded very much. And, and I, but I will be sort of like keeping it up to date a bit more uh, and uh, and that's um, on screen at the moment okay there we go Big on screen at the moment you see some of it anyway. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, and also uh, on blip TV uh, which is where we host it so yeah. uh, and you can also find it on YouTube as well so. indeed yes so lots of places and uh, and and, uh, and there you go um, lovely all right well I'll see you soon Hugh and you too. Cheerio, Phil. Bye-bye.